All right, welcome to the 10 at 10. I'm Jasmine Villain for Amy Johnson. We are just getting a breaking news here of a police chase that is happening. Let's go right to the desk with our assignment manager, Mark. Louis. Mark, what's going on? Yeah, okay, so uh, Jasmine, that vehicle you see right there is described as a white transit van. You can see some damage on it already. L.A. County sheriffs from the East L.A. area are in pursuit of this van. We are currently on the 5 freeway in the Commerce area. Checking the radar here, it looks like we're heading southbound through the Commerce area. Now, this pursuit just just about 15, 20 minutes old. Sky Cal launched out of Van Nuys, went directly to this as soon as we heard it on the scanner. LA County Sheriff's, the air commander I was listening to in the law enforcement helicopter says this is a reckless hit and run suspect. And at some point during this pursuit before Sky Cal got overhead, there was what uh, the code was 245 on a police officer, which is an attempted assault on a police officer. It sounds like the driver of this white transit van may have almost collided in a purposeful manner with one of the law enforcement vehicles involved in this pursuit. Also, we've been hearing on the radio the air commander calling out to the units on the ground that the driver of this white transit van has had multiple near misses and some collisions with vehicles. You can see there's damage on the driver's side. It looks like the driver's side mirror is hanging off. There is some dents on that transit van as well. They're also describing this as possibly the code was reckless deuce, which is sometimes the term used for someone that is driving under the influence. But we have seen, Jasmine, some incredibly dangerous driving already with this very heavy van. This is a white transit van, not a maneuverable vehicle at all. The center of gravity is very high. You can already see the driver here as they weave back and forth. That transit van moves to the side left and right a little bit. It's very unstable, and now we are getting off the freeway here. It looks like we are still in the Commerce area, almost into the Bell Gardens Pico Rivera area now. On to surface streets here this morning. This is still the tail end of rush hour. There's a lot of people on the road right now. We don't know how many people are inside this van beyond the driver. Uh, haven't been able to get a good look yet with Sky Cow's lens to see exactly what that driver, if it's a man or a woman, we have not heard a gender called out on the scanner yet. But LA County Sheriff's multiple ground units behind. They said they had three units, lights and sirens behind this van, and of course the air commander overhead. Sky Cow, I believe, uh, may uh, just got overhead a short time ago. Mm -hmm. They are the only other news media airship I see in the area. So this pursuit uh, definitely dangerous now as we go on surface streets southbound into the Bell Gardens area, Jasmine. And I'm telling you, it's a dangerous one. This van, not easy to maneuver. We are not sure if this driver is familiar with driving such a thing. We haven't heard any word on whether or not this is a stolen vehicle. So far, Jasmine, the want was strictly a hit and run reckless driver so far. Yeah, Mark, this is so frightening to watch as you see the rear view mirror hanging off the driver driver's side door and it looks like uh, the suspect inside uh, appears to be a man at this point but he's also bouncing around that just goes to show what you were saying how uh, uneven this van is to drive right or top heavy as it kind of bounces around and swerves and the damage this particularly can do if it rams into some innocent driver uh, just given the uh, the the size of this white van um so yeah again what we know assault with a deadly weapon that is what's coming in as you said on a peace officer so whether uh, this had some sort of run in to an officer's uh patrol car uh, we did not catch that correct mark yeah, uh, you know, they did say that the, the uh, there was an assault on a police officer. That was the call because it appeared that the driver of this van attempted to purposely swerve into the way of a deputy. I did hear the dispatcher say, do we need 902R for the deputy? 902R is the sheriff's code for an ambulance. And the air commander said, no, that deputy was able to get out of the way. No injuries to the deputy. Okay. Yet it did still appear to the air commander this was a purposeful attempt to strike that deputy. So certainly the driver, ultimately, when they are taken into custody, will face charges charges of assault on a, a peace officer, which is a very serious felony. Now, uh, we continue to drive here through, uh, you know, these surface streets. One of the things that you mentioned, again, we talked about the size of this van, the composition of this van. These vans are typically used for delivery mm -hmm. services. You know, there's a lot of delivery vans out there. They're operated by third party companies. Sometimes they work for very large chains. What we don't know is what's in the back of this van. We have no idea so far and neither do the sheriffs if this van is full of products, if it's got packages back there, if it's very light. That definitely changes the dynamic of how this vehicle will handle in an intense situation, perhaps a sharp turn or a hard stop. If this van is full, this is going to add a huge amount of stopping distance if that 
that driver hits the brakes really hard. If it's very light, it could, it could certainly possibly also cause the driver to become unbalanced as it goes around a turn too fast. It all will change the center of gravity of these vans. Certainly, these vans were never designed for no. the kind of aggressive driving that we're seeing here, including going through, uh, blowing through stoplights. We did hear just at the start of this pursuit. I, the air commander said this vehicle has been driving through red lights and stop signs, complete disregard for safety at one point on the wrong side of the road. Yep. So this very, very large van, a dangerous thing to be on the road right now at this very high speed. Many, many of the people around probably don't realize they're involved in a pursuit, but it does seem like the sheriffs do want to stay lights and oh. sirens behind this. This one, they're probably not going to go surveillance video, surveillance uh, mode, I should say, at least at this time. But you can see right there, Jasmine, another How attempt close. to go on the wrong side right. of the road to get around vehicles. And almost hitting that oh, one of the construction signs or the speed sign there as he's now going down the center divide almost in that center center lane of traffic really threading the needle here between all of these other drivers and that is uh, just so concerning to see this and uh, as we follow this chase uh, again of this alleged hit and run suspect um, the LA Sheriff's Department uh, pursuing very close behind Mark and I know uh, sometimes they might call in or that it enters another jurisdiction for another agency to pick it up but going over at 1.60 miles per hour on these surface streets um, and just flying and swerving around these drivers. Like you said, it was, he was going wrong, uh, this person was going the wrong way at some point. We saw him speed and drive around in that parking lot from earlier, uh, jumping over the curb and then getting back onto these surface streets. He was on the five south for some time, but then uh, obviously exited. And this is what we're looking at now in the uh, Southgate area in East LA, uh, Gage Avenue and Loma Vista. Uh, so yeah, passing the bus. So definitely these drivers want to get out of the way if they hear any kind of these sirens. And, and this is the sheriff's right now, the East LA sheriff uh, initiating this chase. Uh, will they call in for for extra help? I mean, do they lay down a spike strip? Can you do that in this situation? Yeah, I'll know, t Jasmine, I'll tell you, I mean, this it's possible that they might be able to do a pit maneuver, but this very, very unlikely a van of this size and plus uh, the crowded nature of the streets right now. I think a pit maneuver is absolutely out of the question, especially yeah. because they don't know the kinds of contents that are in the back of this van. A spike strip certainly possible as well, but the danger level and the erratic driving oh. would make it extremely dangerous for everyone involved, especially if there's an explosive blowout of any of the tires. Uh, so I don't know if they're going to want to do this. I did hear the air commander and the dispatcher at the LA County Sheriff's uh, Department just speaking. There are six, almost now seven patrol cars, lights and sirens behind this driver. I have a very strong suspicion that they are going to follow and pursue this driver aggressively with lights and sirens because that this driver has shown a propensity to uh, commit what they called was an assault on a police officer, an mm -hmm. assault on a peace officer when they tried to strike that deputy. This shows that this driver it has really no regard for the safety of civilians or law enforcement and it's a very dangerous individual. I don't think they're going to want to let this person go and catch them later. So we are probably going to see uh, a very aggressive pursuit by the sheriffs and also a handoff if it leaves the jurisdiction or goes on to the CHP to another law enforcement agency. Right. I do see just the LA County Sheriff's helicopter as it continues following this uh, truck, I, I should say van uh, west, westbound on gauge through now the Huntington Park area. Uh, we are going to be coming up on the 110 freeway if they continue in this direction. But mm. now it looks like Another we are entering lot. into uh, this is a parking the lot laundromat, of a laundromat, yeah. but there will be an exit here on the west side. And it looks like now a northbound turn onto, I believe, Rugby Avenue. Uh, this uh, show again, this driver. We don't know exactly where this pursuit started. I believe Said, this uh, maybe downtown around yeah. downtown at looking. I'm actually looking at the radar track of the L.A. County Sheriff's helicopter, and it appears they picked this up around the Chinatown, perhaps okay. north downtown area. That's when this driver uh, started the pursuit. And now we're seeing continuing this aggressive driving in these right, smaller these residential and biz commercial streets very dangerous Jasmine oh. and and it's just and we always wonder this do they, are they familiar with this area does he have a certain destination in mind where he thinks okay if i just get to this point i'm going to jump out and try to escape or you know it just is so random too choosing which parking lot to zoom through and i'm so glad that no one has been walking or or in his way at this point because it's just so erratic and he's uh, he's just flying through these areas and look another parking lot, right? It's, uh, you know, trying to swerve and it, I feel like see right around those people trying to get out of his oh, so close. 
Yeah, yeah see, he's trying to find. Uh, see, I was worried he was going to enter some sort of parking structure, but the height clearance on this van um, obviously is going to make that challenging for him to go, you know, into some of these uh, lower structures or whatnot, if that was his goal. Yeah, Jasmine, I'm actually hearing now the dispatcher uh, copy this pursuit out to all uh, L.A. County okay. sheriff's deputies across their jurisdiction that this pursuit involves a white transit van that has now had multiple instances of 245 on a PO. That's uh, assault on a peace officer. So there is more than apparently just one instance now that L.A. County sheriffs have recorded of this uh, van uh, attempting oh. to collide with deputies. Now, another sharp turn causing yep. that civilian vehicle to stop short uh, and Jasmine no really rhyme center. or reason no. or direction here for this van uh, driving through parking lots making aggressive turns this is very dangerous for a van of this size right, simply because say, of the possibility of rolling yeah you can't make these aggressive turns and you see it almost go up on two wheels as as he comes out of some of these parking lots yeah, that's exactly right and now you can see it appears maybe there's damage on the other yeah. side of the van as well so uh, this is now stopping into right. a loading zone here. Hmm. Sky Cal is going to make that turn around. You can see deputies now out and running. Wow, a very aggressive attempt they to take that driver around. out. Oh, the driver oh, he got jumped out, and ran. out that fast. We didn't even see that. He parked and ran. So they are running into this building here at Bickett Street and 54th Street, still in the East LA area. And so, yeah, he. He, he might have been looking for this opportunity. Every single parking lot he drove into, seeing where he could jump out and then run inside. How frightening for these. It looks like some sort of warehouse yeah. uh, and for those employees inside. Yeah, yeah as now the Sky Cal has come around, it looked like the door was open to this warehouse here, yep. and they all ran inside. Now, I have not heard any radio traffic now from the air commander or deputies on the ground indicating that they have made contact with that suspect inside of the that bay. Warehouse, but you can see a civilian so, worker so there just kind just of moving stuff walking out of by, surprised, I'm sure, to see seven or eight sheriff's deputies running in. Um, huh. And uh, well, they have they, the other deputy on the other side, so they have the building. It looks like oh, uh, it looks like we now have civilians out. exiting. Yep. That, uh, and I'm listening right now as the air commander discusses this with the sheriffs that the suspect has now entered the building. Mm -hmm. They're running. Yep. To try to get them out the front ex exit. This is a Tokoya, Tokoya, USA. We'll look up the business here, uh, but definitely some sort of yeah warehouse. As he, as he just flew into that parking spot next to that loading zone. Yeah, they, they are asking for yeah deputies to get an update from the inside and a perimeter around the business. So that could indicate possibly that they have not yet taken the driver into custody. It is a very large warehouse, and it looked like it was perhaps there were some product. You could see that that civilian worker did have a large pallet on wheels. Yep. So that could indicate inside that this entire warehouse is filled with pallets like that. Lots of places to hide. So the fact that we have not seen deputies come out now yet with this suspect in handcuffs means they still may be searching the inside of the business. It looks like it's a... Ah, now we're seeing hmm. our first deputies come out. This is a good sign They're indicating gonna, that they possibly have okay. that driver in custody. That is a very relaxed position open that they the are back. in. Yep. They're going to open. They're going to they're going to try and check that van now and make sure there's nobody else inside. Uh, we should be able to see those deputies if they end up holding up four fingers. That's a sign code four. That means that the van is clear. But the fact that those deputies yeah. are out here and not inside with their guns drawn That's is a good, a, probably a good indicator right. that things may be coming to a conclusion inside of this business. And hopefully no, no employees hurt in the process. But as they file out the front, this is a, uh, it looks like a, a food warehouse, some sort of a sushi, green tea, seaweed manufacturing, food distribution place. Um, Certainly. And now, and now we're seeing what, what is probably a, a, a evacuation of the facility by sheriff's deputies uh, in order to clear this yeah. building. I, it looks like I saw a lot of people, it looked like they were in white coats, so this would also indicate some kind of a, perhaps a food or a yeah. processing facility that would require, uh, you know, protective gear or, or clean gear in order to do the jobs inside. Uh, but uh, still, I am listening to the air commander. Still no code four, no all clear suspect mm. in custody yet. Okay. But the stance of the deputies may indicate that there might not be a they tremendous amount of relaxed. danger on the inside of the building. Yep. Or perhaps they've located the suspect and just not taken them into custody. So yet. they seem more relaxed oh. as they're 
Oh, we may have this. That got him out. definitely looks like someone being taken and into that's custody. Him. It, it was a driver man. in the orange coat. That was the orange coat. We did yep. see a close, a few shots of the driver in what appeared to be an orange top of some kind. This would, this would certainly indicate that this was very likely the driver. As you can see, they're giving him a pat down. Does not appear to be injured in any way. Okay. He looks conscious and alert and standing under his own power. So they must have taken him to custody without any, uh, wow. any sort of use of force here. But uh, looks like this is now going to be a code for this driver now in custody. He has a wild pursuit, incredible. No injuries in this one, it appears. And we'll find out more about the, the initial ask and the, uh, the, assault, the assault on a peace officer, I'm sure, as in the hours and the day ahead. So in custody, this pursuit coming to an end. Mark, I'll let you get back to the, uh, the next few big stories that we'll be checking on in with you in just a few minutes.